Have you ever started adding all these little details of like leaves and the curbs manually and think to yourself, there's gotta be an easier way? Well, in this video, I'm gonna show you how you can actually automate this so you can do it in two clicks just like this. Check that out. So in this video, I'll be showing you how to create this as well as turn it into a preset so you can use it on all your future projects. So let's get right into it. So let's say you've got a path, right? And this is a very typical use case where you just need to add some details because right now it's kind of boring, right? It's basically super bland. So what you want to do is actually go over here to your scatter tool and make sure you're in D5 2.11 because this is a 2.11 feature and you're going to go to either select material or model. I'm going to go with material just because my road is one material and I'm going to left click and hit create. Now you're going to see that there's basically this division grid that comes from scatter. And because my road is so big, you see how my scale is really, really large. It's not going to give me good fidelity once I start breaking up the edges. So check this out. If I go over to custom divide where it says edge divide and click that, you see this right here, this is where it's going to start spawning all those leaves. You know, it's basically autumn time in, in New York right now. The leaves are, are falling, you know, they're basically landing on these edges in the crevices. So we want to add that kind of detail, right? But you can see this resolution is kind of too big to get really nice details. So a little hidden setting right over here is scatter quality. So if you click that, you can actually boost the resolution. I'll just do 500 and you'll see how much smoother these edges are. Look at that. Look at how much more resolution I get there. So now I can actually go in here and determine which area I'm in. I don't want to do zero sub area zero, because that would be for this area in the center. I want to do sub area one, because this is going to give me the edging details. So I can actually hit add assets here, grab my library and just start selecting leaves. And it's going to start adding them. Watch this. And I'm going for these clumps right here. I'll toggle this on and off. It's starting to add those details, but you might be saying, well, you know, it's not full enough. How do I edit that? If you click sub area one right here, it's going to give you the density settings. You crank this guy up. Look at that. It's adding fullness to this. If you want to go one step further and give it even more variation, you can change this texture to be something like this, and it's going to give you more solids and voids. So you can kind of see, you know, it was kind of like a tiger stripe camo kind of thing where they're solid and void. So this is just flat. This is applied everywhere and this is breaking it up. I'll give you another version. So you can play with this to kind of fine tune it, but I'm a big fan of this one. I think it does a pretty good job making it look realistic. And that took no time at all. So once you've gone ahead and you've defined, you know, the amount of assets, the density and everything, you can go ahead and save that to your presets. All you have to do is click right here, studio, and then hit save to MySpace. Then it's going to ask you for a name. Let's call this typical leaf edge. And I went ahead and I made a folder called edges. So I'm going to hit save. And now because I have this, I can actually use this elsewhere on my project. All I have to do is double click this and it's going to start looking for material. So right now the roof is looking kind of plain, right? I can left click, hit create, and now it's going to analyze the roof surface and figure out where the edges are. Check that out. So in no time at all, it added all those details. Well, let's do it one more time. Let's add it around here. You know, this is looking a little too clean. We'll hit create and look at that. It added all this amazing detail. So instead of it just being plain dirt, We've got all this here. Same thing with the roof here. And now here's where it gets even better, right? Like as if you weren't sold already. Um, this is scatter 10. This is all editable. So if I don't want these leaves, right? Or I want them edited, I can actually just edit each of them and it won't affect the other ones. I can swap them out for different assets. So I can click this guy and let's say I just want these orange leaves, right? You could totally do that. So you see that it swapped it out with maple leaf. So my point is they're independent from each other. So feel free to customize them. Use the edge functionality just to get that extra detail in there. So you're not going around and manually placing leaves because you're going to be there all day, right? That's going to take way, way too much time. And if you're new to D5 and you like learning with me, definitely check out my ArcViz Academy. It's my own learning platform and community with over 20 hours of content. You can kind of see here what I've got going on here. If you're new to all this and you want to learn this in a more structured way, definitely check that out. All right, back to the tutorial. And then if there's ever a situation where you've got basically a mesh cutting into your edge and you don't want it to spawn within that mesh, all you have to do is make sure you use this effect and you've got cull and cull brush. And this is basically going to remove anything. So to, to illustrate that, let me just grab cull brush and let's just say, I don't want any edging here. I can actually just paint here and it's going to remove 
the leaves around here. Look at that. And then let me show you before and after. See, there we go. Remove, no problem. So if I want, I can, I can hide this, I can leave it, but that's one way to kind of erase and get some more details, okay? That's calling. The other thing I wanna mention, because this is a scatter group, what might happen is from a distance, it might disappear. So here, I'll go out even more. You can begin to see that the leaves are disappearing. And I have a lot of people ask me, well, what happened to my scatter group? What you may not know is you can actually customize the distance these things kick in. So if you go over to your settings over here and hit preference, and then you go to rendering, you're gonna see something called cull distance. This is basically when the GPU figures out whether or not to display the asset or not, right? So if you increase this, you're gonna see it further. If you decrease it, you're, you're basically gonna see it only when you're super close. This is just for the sake of performance, do know if you're super far away and you don't see it, it will render out, okay? A lot of people freak out about that, but it's it's gonna be there, okay? So some other things I wanna do, um, just for the sake of like sprucing up this road is, we only did the edge, but typically on the inside of the street or anything, right? There's usually more details, and this is kind of where the sub area breakdown is really nice and scatter. So what I can do is to get that scatter again, I can hit my filter, hit scatter, and I believe it's scatter nine. I can actually go to sub area zero and I can double check that by turning on hide scatter highlights. And I can start adding, you know, some like rocks and pebbles, things like that. I can even add, you know, smaller leaves. Like maybe I want to add these peach blossoms, right? This is a little extreme, but this is actually where I can control the density of that. So what I like to do is just increase the collision volume. So they basically spawn less. You see that? So that's one way of controlling that. If I want to add my little rocks in, all I have to do is just search for some pebbles. Let's see if we get anything and I can grab these guys and keep clicking them to add a little bit more. So I'm going to lower this. Let's turn this off just so we can see. And you can see we're getting a couple of rocks and everything. So that's one way to add, you know, simple amount of details. Since, you know, the the probability of these petals is at 100, if I don't want them to spawn as much, I can just lower this to be 10, and then the rocks will spawn more, or the pebbles. You see that? So that's just a nice way to add some simple details to your scene. It doesn't take much time at all. And what you really should be doing is like templatizing, presetting, basically everything. So any new project, you're just reusing the starting point and then you tweak it as needed. Like you saw, it took me no time to add the details for the roof here, the details here. If I wanna go in and then add the details there, like around this pool deck, I can easily do that, right? So just a reminder, you can go to studio, your MySpace, right? Double click, left click the material, hit create, and then you're good to go. Again, this is all editable. So go in there, you know, tweak the collision volume, tweak the scaling and everything, and then you can really dial in the look you're going for. Anyways, wanted to share the trick with the community because I feel like this is this is one that went under the radar in the 2.11 release, and I think it's like extremely powerful. If you have any questions about how to use this, you know, leave a comment, definitely get back to you. And as always, please consider subscribing to the channel and liking this video. See you next time.